All right, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're going to be creating a YouTube subscriber component using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, the really cool part of this component is that we're actually gonna be generating the subscriber count from the YouTube data API, which is going to allow or give us the ability to reach out to the API and get the subscriber count for whichever channel that we wanna go ahead and get, and then we can actually insert that number into this component here. All right, so this is a very practical and useful project. Now, the reason I'm making this is because I actually implemented it into my own personal website, which I'll show you right here. Obviously a lot smaller, but you can see how you can use this component inside of your own website. And I thought, why not go ahead and share it uh, with you guys here today for a little video. So that's what we're gonna be building here. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here in VS Code, I have a few files that I already went ahead and created. So we have our app.js, we have our index.html, and then we also have our style.css here. Now inside of our HTML file here, I wanna go ahead and create our boilerplate. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and start off by just giving this a title. So we'll say YouTube subscriber component here. Okay, so a few things I want to go ahead and paste in is we're going to be accessing the Font Awesome library, and you can go over to CDN, I believe, JS, and you can go ahead and just search this up, and then you can go ahead and get this link tag here for that. And then what we also want to link up is our style sheet here. So we're going to say link, and then we're going to go to our style sheet here. Okay, now a few other things I want to go ahead and import here is in our body, we want to go ahead and import the uh, app.js here. So we're going to go ahead and do that and we'll say right there. Now, one last thing I'm gonna go ahead and import. Now for this video, I'm going to be using Axios to actually make our API call. Now you don't have to use this, you can go ahead and use fetch, but I just prefer Axios. I'm gonna go ahead and actually insert this script tag for Axios here inside of our body as well. And I'll go ahead and leave these in the link down below in the description so you can go ahead and just add these to your project if you are following along. Now, what we wanna go ahead and do first is actually just create our you know, our button here or the actual components. So what I wanna go ahead and do is we're gonna create a div with a class of YouTube, I guess we can just call it button here. And then inside of here, I wanna go ahead and get the font awesome icon. So I'm gonna copy and paste this in here. It's gonna be an I class or an I tag with a class of FAB and then FA-YouTube here. And then finally, last thing I wanna go and do, so the markup is very simple for this component, it is very, uh, very easy and straightforward. We want a P, uh, paragraph tag here, and then we don't need to give this a class, but what we wanna do inside of here is give it a span, which is gonna have the class of sub count, which is where we're gonna be using JavaScript to dynamically insert this in here. And then we're going to say, outside of the span tag, subscribers here, okay? So with that saved, how I'm gonna actually view this is with live server. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit open with live server here. And it should go ahead and open it up and it did on the wrong page. So let me just go ahead and copy this right here. New tab and let's paste that in. Okay, so currently this is what we have. So obviously we need to go ahead and do some styling here. So inside of our style sheet, what we need to do, let's go ahead and open this up here. Sorry about that. And what we first wanna do is I'm actually gonna be importing a Google font here, uh, which are gonna be using Poppins, okay? Uh, many of you guys may have not heard of this, but I seen something on Twitter uh, from a few people I follow, I think Traversy Media and then uh, Floor and Pop, they were talking about this and I never used it before and it's actually a really cool font. So we're gonna be using that here for this project. I had something different, but when I seen that, I had to go ahead and switch it. And then what I'm gonna start off with here is we're gonna do a simple reset and we're gonna be doing a margin here of zero. Uh, so let's do that. We're gonna have a padding of zero. We're gonna have a box sizing of border box here. And then the font family, we're just gonna simply say Poppins here. And then if that's not available, we'll just say sans serif. Okay, now I wanna go ahead and style our body. Now this is only going to be to position the actual content into the center. So what we're gonna do is give it a height of 100 VH. Uh, we need to set up a display of flex here. We want to justify the content to the center. And then we also want to align those to the center. All right. Now for our YouTube button here, so we'll target that. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna give this a padding around all sides of 20 pixels. We're gonna go ahead and give it a color of white. 
And then for the background color, we're gonna be using this red, which I believe is a color YouTube uses. I think I found the right one, which is gonna be CC181E. And then what we wanna do is display this as flex. And to center everything horizontally, what we wanna go ahead and do is set this to align items and put that to the center. And then we're also going to have a box shadow on here, which I'm gonna copy in to save some time here. All right, so that'll be our button. Now inside of our button, we have our I tag and also our paragraph and our span tag. So let's go ahead and actually style those up here. So for our icon here, we can just target it with the I and we're gonna say font size and we're gonna say 30 pixels here. And then we're gonna give it a margin on the right of 12 pixels and that'll do it. Let's save that. And then we need to target our paragraph tag here, which we're gonna go ahead and give this a font size of 18 pixels. And then finally our span tag here to go ahead and separate it from the content in the paragraph. We're gonna go ahead and say margin on the right and say four pixels. Okay, so if we save that and head over, we should see something like this. Now to go ahead and just put some uh, content in there for right now, let's go ahead and just say like 302, which is what I think I had at the time. So as you can see here, this is currently our widget. Now, in order for us to actually dynamically populate this, we need to go ahead and set up our YouTube, uh, I guess I wouldn't say our YouTube data API account, but we need to set up a Google account and then get a new API key to access the YouTube data API. So let's head over to Google and begin to set that up. Okay, so here on the Google Cloud platform is where we're actually gonna set up the ability to get our access to the YouTube data API. Now to begin, what we wanna go ahead and do is first off, make sure you have an account. And then here on the actual dashboard, you can actually see this button we have called Create Project. So let's go ahead and do that. Now what we need to do is give this project a name. So we're gonna say YouTube subscriber, and then we'll just say uh, sub YT. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't really need to be anything specific, but uh, for this project, that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do here. So we wanna go ahead and click create here. And this will take a few moments to actually uh, go ahead and create here. So uh, once this is all done, I think we should be good here. So what we wanna go ahead and do is head over to the APIs and services. So we're gonna head over here and it says there's an error while loading. Let me try refreshing this, see if that fixes it. Okay, so I'm not really sure what happened there. I don't know if the project wasn't ready yet or what was going on, but it seems to be all good now. So you can see here we have our YouTube sub YT project. So first thing we wanna go ahead and do is actually create our API key. So what we need to do is on our navigation here, we wanna go ahead and click credentials here, okay? Then from here, we wanna select the create credentials uh, uh, button up top here, we wanna create a new API key. Okay, so pretty simple. And then it's gonna go ahead and create our API key here. We can go ahead and close it. And we're now going to see that right here in our API keys. Now, last thing that we wanna go ahead and do is head back over to our dashboard here. And we want to enable or click the button enable APIs and services. And this, will, this is where we're gonna go ahead and actually enable the YouTube data API. So what we wanna go ahead and do here is say YouTube data API version three and then we wanna go ahead and click on enable this. And once this is all set, we'll now be able to use our API key to actually reach out to the YouTube data API and get our subscriber information for whichever channel that we want to for this component. Now back here in VS Code inside of our JavaScript file, we're going to set up the ability to reach out to our API and populate our component with our subscriber count here. So first thing I wanna go ahead and do is create a new variable here, which is gonna have our API key. So we're gonna say API key, and we're gonna set this equal to our API key, which if we head over to our cloud over here, our cloud platform, and we go to credentials, we can actually copy this API key from here, which we created earlier, and we can paste it inside of this variable here. Now, the next one I wanna go ahead and create, or the next variable is going to be for our YouTube channel ID. So I'll call this YouTube ID. Now this is going to be the ID of your channel. Now you can find this in the browser. So if we head over to, let's say, YouTube here, and we go over to your channel, 
and you can see it's going to be this ID right here. So what I'm going to do is copy that and we're going to paste that inside of this variable here as well. Now the last variable I want to go ahead and create is going to be for our span tag here because we're going to want to go ahead and get a hold of this so we can go ahead and inject that number we get from our API into this span tag right here. Okay, so we're going to say sub count and we're going to set it equal to a document dot query selector and we're going to say sub count here. Okay, oops. All right, so with these three out of the way, we can actually go ahead and begin creating our function to reach out to our API. So let's go ahead and create that function. So we're going to say get YouTube subs and we're going to set this equal to a sync and we're going to say our arrow function here because we're going to be using async and await to make our API call here. So the first thing we want to go ahead and do is actually reach out to our API here. So I'm going to create a new variable to do this and we'll call this get data and we'll set this equal to await and Axios here. Can I avoid that from happening? And I cannot. So we're using the script tag version here. So we don't need to actually require or import this. I don't know why it's doing that by default, but okay, we'll get rid of that here. And then we want to go ahead and say Axios dot get. Okay. Now what I want to go ahead and do in here is we want to pass the URL for the YouTube data API. So we're going to be using backticks here. Now for the API URL, we can head over to the docs here and we're going to be using the channels route here. So there's a whole bunch of different routes you can go ahead and get data from for this API, but we're going to be using the channels route here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this right here. I'll go ahead and leave the dis uh, link down below in the description for this uh, site here. Okay, so let's go ahead and paste that in. Now, we also need to pass along a few parameters here. So back in the docs, if we scroll down a little bit, you can see we have this parameters right here. Now we have this required parameter or parameters of part, which we're going to be using, and we want to go ahead and get the statistics here. All right, so copy that. So what we want to go ahead and do here is say question mark, and we're going to say part, and we're going to set this equal to statistics here. Now, along with this, we also need to pass along our two variables up here of our API key and our YouTube ID. So the first one we're going to go ahead and do is our ID. So we're going to say and ID equals, and we'll use our money sign and our curly brackets here, and we're going to say YouTube ID. And we also want to pass along our API key. So we're going to say and we'll say key equals in our money sign and our curly brackets here, and we'll say API key. Okay, so that is our simple get request that's going to pull the stats from our YouTube channel that's going to have our subscriber count. Okay, so just to go ahead and show you this is working, let's just go ahead and log out to the console here. We'll say console.log and we'll simply say get data here. Now, in order for this to run, we're going to need to explicitly call this out here. So let's go ahead and save that. Now, if we head over to our component here and we go to inspect and we go to our console, we should see that we're going to get this object return here. Okay, so inside of this object, we have a object called, or we have our data object here. So I'm going to open this up and we need to do a little bit of digging to get to our info that we need. So there is this items array and it has one object here. And inside of this object, we have another object called statistics here which is where we're going to have our subscriber count info we're going to be using to populate our component here. Okay, so just wanted to kind of show you how we're going to get to that visually here and not just go ahead and type it out. So let's go ahead and remove this console.log statement here. And let's go ahead and create a new variable to hold our subscriber count. So we'll say YouTube sub or subs. And let's set this equal to get data. And we'll say dot data. And remember, we had the items array, so we want to go ahead and get that first value of that array, so we're going to pass it zero, and then we'll stay, or say statistics there, excuse me, and we're going to say subscriber count. Okay, so with this value in this variable, what we can do then is reference our other var variable here of sub count, which is our span, and we can go ahead and insert this value into the span. So how we can do that is by saying sub count, and doing enter HTML and setting it equal to our YT subs. Okay, so now if we head back to our component, you should see that we're gonna have our number of subs, which is 302, which matches this right here. So that's all working great inside of our button here. Now, there's still 
One small issue with this, so I have a relatively smaller channel, so you don't really, you're not going to notice this, but if I were to go ahead and, let's say, comment this out right here, and then what we want to go ahead and do is create a new variable here. We're going to say const y, or we'll say the same thing, yt subs here, and let's set this equal to a different number, something a little bit larger, so let's say like 20,000 here. So if we head back over now, you can see that it's going to show the full number here on this button, which doesn't look very great and it doesn't match YouTube standards. So if you have over, I believe, a thousand subs, it'll say 1K or 1.35K, but we're not going to go ahead and get that in depth with this component. So what I want to go ahead and do is shorten this so it, that it says 20K or if it's 200,000, it says 200K. All right. So. Let's go ahead and fix this. So it's pretty easy, the solution I have. And there might be better ways of uh, doing this. And if you have those, I would love to hear those down in the comments below. But this way seemed to work pretty easily and it wasn't too complex. So first thing I want to go ahead and do is create a new variable here. We'll say let format it sub. And we're going to let that equal a empty value for the start here. Now I want to go ahead and do an if check here, and we're going to say if yt subs dot length is let's see here greater than or equal to four. So what that's going to say is if the sub count is equal to one thousand or more, this will go ahead and pass. And we also want to check that yt subs is going to be less than or equal to six numbers. So that'll mean it will be less than a million. So it'll be the max it can be is 999,000. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense what we're doing here. Now, if this is true, and the subs that we get that we are getting returned from the API is between this value, we want to go ahead and format it a little bit differently. So what we're going to do here is say formatted sub is going to be equal to math dot floor. And what we want to pass in here is we're going to say yt subs, and we want to divide this by 1000. So hopefully that makes sense what we're doing here. So we're taking 20,000, for example, divided it by 1000, which will give us 20. So then at that point, what we want to go ahead and do is we want to say sub count dot enter HTML equals and we're going to use some interpolation here. So we'll pass in our newly assigned formatted sub value here. And we'll say K for 1000. Okay, and then to avoid any issues here, let's go ahead and return out of this so it doesn't assign it right here. Because if we do this, it's going to come down to finish this uh, part of the function if we don't return out of it. Okay, so with that implemented, now we should see it say 20k instead of 20,000. So if we head back over here and we refresh it, we still see 20,000. What did we do wrong here? Format it sub divided by a thousand. What did we do here? Uh, well, it looks like I forgot to go ahead and say length on the second portion of our AND operator here. So now that should work, and you should see that we're going to have 20K. So the other issue is if we have over 999,000, so a million. So, for example, if we make this at two more zeros, make this 2 million, we want to go ahead and display it a little bit differently than this right here. We want to go ahead and add a million on it, and we also want to divide it by a little bit of a larger number. So we're going to use the same sort of setup here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this down, but only we want to change a few things here. So we're going to say if it's gr uh, greater than or equal to seven, then we want to divide this by one million. So not 1000, we want to divide it by a million. So we're going to go ahead and add three zeros here for a million. And then we want to format this with a M instead of a K. And that's going to be simply it. So now if we head back over to our component here, you should see that it says 2 million. So now we're accounting for all types of subscriber values, whether you have 100, 1,000, 200,000, or anywhere in the millions. So that's going to go and wrap it up here for this video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and can find use of this component somewhere inside of your application or project. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm using it inside of my personal website here in my navigation bar. So I thought, why not go ahead and share it with you guys here today for a quick little video. So anyways, like I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, be sure to leave a like on it down below. Subscribe if you're new and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.